This is Eric Sloof at the VMware booth, and I'm right next to Michael Roy and Chris Galati. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, Eric, how's it going? Doing fantastic. Michael, the vCloud hybrid service, what does it do? Is it a product or? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked. So it's, a, it's more than a product, it's actually a service. So VMware has decided to enter the cloud space and enter the cloud services business. So what we're providing with the vCloud hybrid service is an infrastructure as a service that's delivered by VMware using the VMware technology. So it's a subscription-based service where we provide uh, two different types of capacity. There's a dedicated offering and a virtual private offering with some different uh, different controls that we can talk about. But essentially, it's the cloud offering from VMware on VMware's technology. I can imagine that a lot of partners who have invested a lot of money in their own cloud and offering services to their clients are not very amused. Uh, are clients allowed to buy space in your client directly, or is, 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 is there another model invented for it? Well, we're really channel focused. We love our channel, we love our partners. So what we're actually doing is we're using our channel with which to build our customer base for the service. So we're actually partnering with other ISVs and other cloud providers to help deliver the service as well. How do you difference from a client that is only uh, only renting a few virtual machines and another client that wants to uh, rent uh, a complete data center. Is there a different differentiation between those types of clients? Yeah, absolutely, and that kind of comes down to where the two offerings are. So our virtual private cloud is a multi-tenant offering which is uh, has a lower uh, a lower barrier to entry and a shorter commitment, it's only a three month uh, commitment. Uh, in addition, the dedicated cloud offering is, is the higher one. So it's actually air-gapped infrastructure that is uh, physically separated and we actually uh, have isolated management for that as well as isolated networking and other isolated components. So that's like, you can carve that up into smaller subsections, other virtual data centers, and the virtual private cloud essentially is a virtual data center that we provide you. Okay. And uh, a lot of uh, people also want to know where their data is. Uh, I've, it's learned, it, I've learned that <laughs> during the keynote that there are two new data centers opened recently. Uh, what are the locations of those data centers? Uh, so we've got currently, we're in California, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, there's one in Virginia and another, where's our fourth one? Texas. Texas. Dallas, yeah. So that's where we're coming out the gate and I believe that there's plans to have a lot more by the end of the year with, uh, with the help of some of our partners. Stay tuned. Great, great. So, Chris, once uh, a customer decides to uh, transfer a few virtual machines to, uh, to, to the hybrid cloud, do they have to put them on a CD or a tape, or how does it work? Uh, that's actually a great question, Eric. So, you know I come from the vSphere background, so I've been very focused on how to help our vSphere customers migrate some of their workloads to vCloud Hybrid Service. Uh, the first way that we do it, we actually have three ways that we can uh, upload data to the environment. Uh, we can use the uh, vCloud Director Java client, which has been around for a while, but preferably what we want to use is we want to use the vCloud Connector, which is the product that's been around for a couple of years now. It started out in, uh, in 1.0 when vCD first came out. But that's really the tool of choice to pick up and move those workloads out to the cloud. So we can actually, uh, it has to be shut down, right? So we can copy a workload all the way out in a streaming fashion. We have a couple different ways to do it. What's also unique is with vCloud Connector, if you have large amounts of data that you want to transfer, we have something called Offline Data Transfer, or ODT, where we'll actually ship a, a NAS appliance to the customer, and they can connect it to their vCloud Connector environment and download all that heavy data to that appliance and ship it back to us, and the operations team will actually upload that into their cloud. So that's a unique offering that allows those large pieces of data. I think we've actually had a couple customers use that already. Uh, the other thing that vCloud Connector brings to us is something called data center extension or stretch deploy. So customers who want to migrate virtual machines but not change IP addresses and MAC addresses, they can extend that network into the cloud uh, from a layer two perspective. So there's a lot of stuff we're working on to actually help people with that process and actually work through it. What actually Mike and I have been uh, uh, relating it to is you and I remember this, the old P to V days, right? When we did physical to virtual migrations, we're really calling it a vSphere to cloud migration. So we're we're sort of perfecting the process, but it will all use those tools that we have today. But we've uh, we've done it already for a bunch of customers. We've got customers using ODT, and it'll just continue to evolve so that we can actually get those workloads out. I'm mean, spinning up new workloads. That's easy. Anybody can do that. Okay. And once the workload is in uh, in the in the in the cloud, 
the customer wants, still wants to be able to power all and power off virtual machines. Are they able to manage their virtual machines in the cloud? Yeah, so one of the exciting things we saw today that we can actually talk about, and I think uh, we loaded up the demo from this morning, is the, the vSphere web client uh, plugin. Are we calling them plugins now? For the, yeah, I think we're calling them plugins. Uh, the hybrid cloud plugin, uh, which actually gives you visibility to both your vSphere environment through the web, through the web client and your vCloud hybrid service. And I think can, you, can you show us uh, a, a short demo of the, of the plugin? That one's on the other side of the booth. <laughs> we saw it this morning. But what you actually see, uh, it, you'll actually see the same data that you see here. This is actually the UI from uh, vCloud Hybrid Service. So when you log in, this is what you'll see. You can actually have access to all of your virtual data centers that you've deployed. Uh, you can see how many virtual machines have been deployed at a snapshot. This same data gets pushed through to that, to that web client. So instead of having to log into a web browser and then log into vSphere, you can manage it in one place but get the same data. And then you're able to actually drill down into the virtual data centers that you've provisioned and start to see the virtual machines that have been spun up, what resources they're using, uh, deploy new virtual machines. And to Michael's point, uh, if you have access, you can actually see here we have a virtual private shared cloud and we have our dedicated cloud. You can start to carve this out further if you wanted to in the dedicated space. So. The, all of the functionality here is basically what's getting pushed into that web client, which is great. It gives that, it's starting to become a better single point of view. Okay, great, awesome. Is there something else you can show us? Yeah, one thing that's really interesting that I wanted to point out too is, in addition to just being able to migrate services and have this, the, the actual infrastructure available is, you're actually able, from the same interface, able to purchase more resources. If you run out of capacity inside of this cloud, okay. it's really only one click that you can go ahead and add more resources once you've got the subscription. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So a single sign, you right onto my VMware. You can just click the button, and you know, and within I think the dedicated cloud, we got it down to like an hour of provisioning, and virtual yeah. private's in five minutes. Okay. Yeah. And one, well, one other thing we'll point out is as you go through this, and you uh, people who are actually familiar with vCloud Director, there's a there's a bunch of functionality that's pushed through to this portal, so you can see the high level stuff. But if you're a more advanced user and you need to do more advanced things uh, that that require getting into vShield Edge and things like that, we actually now allow the customers to see what their vCloud Director URL is directly so they can access the APIs. Uh, if they're using external tools, that's basically their API address for uh, all automation tools they might be using like PowerCLI or VCAC. But we actually give them the ability to lo uh, log from here out to that environment. So if they wanted to uh, manage this in vCloud Director, you can actually go click right out and we use single sign-on that'll bring them right to their VCD interface so they don't have to log in again. Uh, and then actually access their catalogs and some of the other functionality that's still kind of in the back end, which is great. So you can, guys like me and Mike, uh, who, who still want to get in and dig into some of these other pieces, we get access to the back end. So people who are, have been using VCD, we expose that for them as well, which is great. Great, great. Sounds like a real good offering. Thank you guys for the demo, thank you. As always, thanks for you, Eric.